Good morning. Grace, mercy, and peace from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, who here today wouldn't like to be regarded as really wise and understanding? You know, who, who among us would like to be regarded as great as a great person? Well, that's kind of a dumb question, I think, because who wouldn't? You know, I suppose all of us, if we had our druthers, would like others to praise us for our wisdom. You know, all of us would like to have the advantage of being the so-called great one. You know, we like it when we get the perks of prestige. Being first, getting the top prize, gaining the best position of power, you know, these things are what we all enjoy. But these things can be and very often are poison for our very souls. You know, we feed our ego or that great big I that lives inside of each one of us. You know, this all comes to us naturally. And this desire for praise and prestige and position, so often it's a case of me being so turned in on myself that the big eye cries, you know, crowds out the other people and their needs. And how I might be in a position to serve them. You know, so often my attention crowds out my devotion to God and how I can serve Him. You know, this is a problem that we should all be able to recognize in ourselves. You know, this putting oneself at the center of the universe and, and making me, myself, and I into the three persons kind of our own personal trinity. You know, this is our problem even though we're Christians. For we still have that old self-centered, sinful nature to deal with our whole life long. You know, thus we need to have self-centeredness forgiven, forgiven by our Lord and Savior. And we need to have our minds transformed to think in new ways about life and to actually live that way and to put it into practice. And this new way of thinking and living is what we might call the wisdom of humble servitude. And, you know, both uh, lessons this morning, the epistle from James and the gospel from Mark address this. You know, first listen here to what James has to say. You know, who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and self-ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. You know, this isn't the wisdom that comes down from above, but it's the earthly, unspiritual, demonic wisdom, so to speak. You know, for where jealousy and self-ambition exist, there's only disorder and very vile practice. But the wisdom from above is... First pure, then it's peaceful, it's gentle, it's open to reason, it's full of mercy and good fruits, it's impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace to those who make peace. Notice this is, wisdom isn't just a matter of being smart. And right here, I'm going to give you all a little background on myself. I come from a background of engineering. I'm a second career pastor. Uh, anybody know the difference between knowledge and wisdom? I'm going to put this in a good old South Texas way of saying it. Knowledge is book learning. Wisdom is the ability to know how to use that knowledge. You know, you got to notice that what I'm saying here 
that wisdom isn't just a matter of being smart, it's knowing a lot of stuff. You know, rather, true wisdom will show itself in how we live our lives and character and conduct. You know, this is a wisdom that comes down from above, a heavenly wisdom, the, the God kind of wisdom. And this is how God would have his Christians think and act. You know, how about you, as far as that goes? How about every one of us, including me? How do you, how do you think in your inner thoughts, those thoughts that are hidden from others? Perhaps, maybe they aren't hidden from God. Is there some selfishness in there? Maybe there's a lot of selfishness. And it recurs in one form or the other. You know, what about jealousy? When we envy the praise and the good things in life that others are having. And when this self-seeking attitude works its way into our relationships with other people, in our church, in our household, in our families, what's the result? Simply disorder and conflict. Things get out of whack. Harmony's broken. Bitterness, for unforgiveness, and resentment seem to rule. As James puts it, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it, isn't this that your passions are at war within you? Can you recognize this bad fruit is evident in your life? Have you seen to disturb the harmonious res of relationships that ought to be there in a marriage, in a family, even in a congregation? You know, my friends, this isn't the wisdom from above. No, this is in the words of James, earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. These thoughts that we have. The devil loves nothing better than to stir up our selfish nature so that we can stir up dissent and disharmony among our brothers and sisters. You know, this takes our eyes off our Lord. It, it takes our eyes off serving our neighbors. And I get turned in on myself and defending my position at the expense of everything and everybody else. And this isn't good. You know, what do we do when we recognize this tendency within ourselves? You know, to start with, in one simple word, we need to repent. You know, Jesus would tell us, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to glory. Humble yourselves before the Lord. You know, humble yourselves before the Lord, James says. But that's not the end of it. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. You know, that's the rest of the story. You know, the Lord will exalt you and he'll lift you up. You know, this is the grace of our God. His unmerited forgiveness and favor. You know, James writes, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it said, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You know, God's grace is such that he forgives our failures to love and to serve. He forgives our stinking selfishness. You know, God's in the business of forgiving and cleansing damned and dirty sinners such as you and myself. He gives more grace. Indeed, God gives us his only son. Grace and truth and wisdom come through Jesus Christ. You know, the wisdom that comes down from above takes the form of one who, for us men and our salvation, came down from heaven and was made man. 
Christ, the Son of God incarnate. He is God's wisdom and human flesh. You know, it was for this purpose to rescue us from ourselves that Jesus laid down his life on our behalf. You know, Jesus was lifted up, but he was lifted up on a cross to suffer the pangs of death as a sacrifice for all the sinners of the world, including each and every one of us here this morning. You know, Jesus told his disciples, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him. And when he is killed after three days, he will rise. Who of, you, who, who of you here today is understanding? Do you understand what this means? You know, Jesus' death and resurrection does the job. You know, what Jesus came to do is complete. You know, the mission's been fulfilled, sin covered and completely forgiven. Life triumphs and the Christ-like life lives forever. That triumphs over death and even reigns in life. You know, you're a new person, a new and dear Christian joined to Jesus in baptism. There's a new you available, a you who will live for others and not only for self, a you that is interested in serving God who has redeemed you and willing and able to do so. You know, this is the renewing of your mind and the transforming of your thinking. Here we see this new, ma new nature manifest in our relationship, the, the meekness of wisdom, James calls it. Now don't mis mistake weakness For meekness. You know, this is not a flaw. It's a, it's a strength in our character to be meek. In the beatitude, Jesus commends meekness, saying, Blessed are the meek. The word, word meek or meekness means gentleness or humility. You know, meekness is to be like Jesus. You know, that's really what it means. It it's to be strong and secure that you're willing to take the lower part in humility and to bend down and to serve others. You know, that's the characteristic of strength. You know, it's to be secure in who you are in Christ so that you don't have to be ever grasping and looking out for number one. And it's to take the lower part in service to others. Your strength and your security and your confidence are found in Christ. And nothing can shake that. You're so freed up to serve that it's a good thing and it's pleasing to God. You know, God gives a, an example of this meek, humble servanthood when he talks about his self-seeking disciples in the gospel from Mark this morning. You know, we're told they were quarreling about, guess what? You know, who was the greatest among them? And that was nothing new for these guys. They were a lot like you and I in this respect. So Jesus kind of turns things upside down on them, which is really right side up when you look at it. If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. Hmm. Why are you talking in riddles, Jesus? The servant is really the greatest? You know, the one who lets himself be last is really first. You know, I think I'm beginning to get it after all these years. Who does this more than Jesus himself, the one who came not to be served, but to serve and to give life as a ransom for many? You know, there's no greater servant than Jesus himself. And Christ would have his disciples do likewise. So Jesus takes a little child and sets him in their midst. 
Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. Do you want to be great? Then serve this little child. Serve the old lady in the nursing home. Serve the lonely neighbor. You know, these people may not get you ahead in the world, you know, they can seem kind of insignificant and powerless people, kind of living on the fringe, you might say. And if they've got no one to look after them, maybe God would like to take care of them. God kind of has a thing about caring for poor and lonely and the last and the least and the lost in our society today. And maybe would like, you know, God would like you to do that kind of caring. You know, think about it for a minute. Keep your eyes open this week for opportunities. You know, God will tap you on the shoulder and remind you that you're in Christ, that you're able to love people now. And with me, sometimes that tap on the shoulder is more of a wrap up the side of the head, though. You know, you're strong enough to be meek. And this puts a different light on things, now, doesn't it? You know, this is wisdom. This is wise living. You know, in the beginning of James' epistles, he writes, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generally to generously to all without report reproach and it will be given to him so what do you say let's take God up on his promise brothers and sisters in Christ let us ask God to grant us the wisdom of humble servitude Amen. May the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.